We live our lives as the prisoners of thoughts that seem plausible but can never be true. This is just as terrifying in the sciences as it is within religion. It seems plausible that if you do good deeds, you'll go to heaven after you die. If you do good deeds, you'll be reincarnated as a better person, whereas those who do bad deeds will be punished and things will turn out terribly for them. It seems plausible in the same way as a sort of moral fable that if each of us just pitches in and does our part, if we all just do our best, we can beat global warming. By recycling glass bottles, by taking fewer vacations, by reducing the number of airplanes being used for tourism. I have viewers in the audience of different ages. Some of you will not be old enough to remember September 11th, 2001, and the first few months of 2002 thereafter. Let me tell you, that was the single most dramatic decline in international air transport in the history of the world to that time. There was a sudden, abrupt reduction in the number of airplanes flying around the world. Did you hear anyone saying, oh, wow, and just look at the number of parts per million of carbon in the atmosphere. Look at how it's reduced. Look at how it's gone down. I've had several people say to me on the internet just in the last few months that they believe or they presume that reducing the number of airplanes in circulation will solve the carbon pollution crisis. And they point to what's happened in just the last few years, 2019, 2020, and now 2021. And indeed, this is about the most extreme reduction of tourism, international air transport that you could have under sort of voluntary conditions without really having government policies or, or the outbreak of a war that forces people to stop taking flights. Look at the charts I have on screen for you right now. There was no reduction in the parts per million of carbon in the atmosphere in 2019, 2020, and in the year 2021, these statistics are accurate up to the middle of September 2021. It did not make a difference. It did not even slow down the rate at which the problem is getting worse. And if you haven't seen this type of chart a million times before, in case you are deluding yourself into imagining that we're still within the normal range for carbon in the atmosphere, no, the orange line on the right-hand side of the chart shows how far we are above whatever could be considered normal going back in history, not just hundreds of years, but many, many thousands of years. And here's the thing. The world's going to end. The world as we know it is over because even if you can cope with the sun's rays coming in, even if you can, for example, deploy satellites to reflect away excess solar radiation, even if you can manage the temperature change or the rise of the oceans or maintain ice packs on the top of the mountains in India that provide river water that's crucial to the lives of about a billion people, even if you can do all that, even if you can manage everything as brilliantly as possible, the simple fact that there is more carbon in the atmosphere means that the acidity of the oceans is increasing. That the whole ecosystem of the ocean, including the tiniest forms of life, including the constituent components of coral reefs, Anything and everything in the ocean that relies on calcium, which is pretty much all life in the ocean as we know it, the whole food chain of the ocean will be wiped out. And yes, in case you didn't know it, that whole food chain is also related to the production of oxygen, the production of clouds. It's a huge part of what makes life on Earth as we know it possible now. So we are looking at game over for the oceans, even in the best case scenario of all the other coping mechanisms. Stuff like Elon Musk here, posing with his brand new, uh, his brand new system of, of roofing and solar panels. All right, 
All of these things proposed to us currently by government experts, by people with PhDs who are now being interviewed on the news, okay, all of them are a goddamn joke. And do you know what's worse? Do you know who's worse? We are. People like us are even worse. Because I can say about Elon Musk, he's still out there trying. He is still out there quite literally building solar roofs. And I'm the guy's harshest critic, but I've got to hand it to him. He's born rich. He had a successful career. He got richer. What did he want to do with his millions of dollars? He wanted to save the world. He's made a lot of mistakes along the way. In some cases, he's done more harm than good. But I can say that he is still out there with his millions of dollars, humbly trying to nail solar panels onto people's rooftops to do his part. And we, the vegans of YouTube, five years ago, we were so committed to this notion of lifestyle activism that what we were going to do is display beautiful bodies in bikinis in front of beaches. And we were going to change the world and we didn't even change YouTube. This is the reality. The woman in the bikini you've just been looking at is Tess Begg. And she is typical in as much as her commitment to this cause, her commitment to promoting veganism, her commitment to saving the world, just plain evaporated. It just disappeared as soon as the money stopped flowing in. And I feel this is true across the board. I feel it's true across our whole strange category of so-called activism. There was a time when she could relatively effortlessly get half a million views in a month. And now she's at a point where she has to work very hard just to get a few thousand views and you know what? She stops trying. She stops making the effort. All the people who were pretending that they were far more committed to this cause than Elon Musk. All the people who looked down their noses at people like Elon Musk and one generation of political leaders after another as they came and went and said, oh, 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 we're not like them. We're morally superior to those people. We are the ones who are truly going to save the planet. You know what? I think all of them were unaware themselves of the extent to which they were just motivated by money, fame, power, respect, and sex. And once they'd got their money and got their fame and gotten laid, they took their bag of money and they goddamn left. And I would say this about a lot of people in lab coats. A lot of people are supposedly respectable scientists who have made millions of dollars out of this game. And they are not trying to save the world. I want to close this video by asking you a very simple question. When you look at these charts today, when you look at these hopeless charts, can you remember what your own attitude was 10 years ago, what your expectations were 20 years ago? I think a lot of you, if you're really being honest and reflecting, probably 20 years ago you thought, oh, well, yeah, this is bad. This carbon dioxide in the atmosphere thing is bad. Or you might have even known specifically about Ocean acidification. Oh, this is bad, but it's getting better and better now. Oh, looking forward to the next five years, 10 years, 15 years, all these famous people, whether you're thinking of sexy influencers in bikinis or multimillionaires who are captains of industry or the leading politicians in America, France, Germany, England, everyone is preaching from the same prayer book. Everyone's on side. Everyone supports this cause. So from here, it can only get better and better. Well, guess what? Look at the line on the chart. It got worse, and it has continued to get worse during 2019, 2020, 2021. There are no effective halfway measures. Reducing airplane transport won't do it. We're looking at two options, and we need coercive action on either one now. Either we engage in public education and coercion on a massive scale, to force humanity to transition to a vegan diet, or we look at radically reducing the number of human beings on planet Earth. Of those two, ethically and politically and pragmatically, I know which one I'd support. Just a few weeks ago, I had this long, in-depth discussion on the channel. If you haven't seen it, watch it now. And at several points during that discussion, I point the finger at my audience and say, not one of you is going to send me an email 
after I make this video following on this. I'm not going to get one email talking about taking action. And instead, I'm going to continue getting a whole bunch of bullshit emails about my sex life. Some of which are from people who want to gossip about it. Some of which are from people who actually want to fuck me. Whatever. Whether I'm flattered or annoyed by this is immaterial. During that video, you'll hear me say, look, we supposedly have gathered here in this audience today some of the most intelligent, the best informed, and the most cynical people who've ever been in the vegan community. What are you going to do about it? Because I know I'm not even going to get one email and I don't have one colleague to work with. There's nothing I can do. There's nobody I can call. That's where I'm at as I creep closer to 6 million views total on YouTube. It seems so plausible that some scientist in a lab coat, that some government official, that someone somewhere wealthier, more powerful, more influential than yourself is going to solve this problem. And I think we live with that seemingly plausible myth the same way that people live with the expectation of going to heaven or hell after they died throughout the dark ages. What I'm saying to you now is no. Nobody else is going to do it for you. Nobody is coming to save you. Neither Elon Musk nor Tess Begg in her bikini. Neither millionaire activism nor consumer activism nor lifestyle activism Nothing is going to make the difference. I'm turning to you in the audience and asking, how about you?